yeah, like a starter pack as well for like a longevity supplement list or some of the ones that you think are the best, cheapest ones and the kind of easiest ones people uh, could use? Yeah, so before I get into that, I, I do just want to emphasize, and I keep going on about this, no supplement is going to replace diet and exercise. Mm. So th these supplements are trying to add on to, um, to that. So when it comes to supplements, if, if you wanted to dip your toe in, if you like, I don't really see any downside for taking omega-3. I think that, you know, that, that's been around for a long time. There's a lot of safety data on it. There's a suggestion um, that in 2020, there was a meta-analysis by the Mayo Clinic, um, which, you know, when they combine all of the data together, it seems that by taking omega-3, you do improve heart health. And by that, I mean, you likely reduce your chance of having a heart attack. So I, I think if, if anyone wanted to dip their toe into supplements, omega-3 would probably be the way to go. And mm. the second one would be vitamin D. So a lot of people now are working indoors. We're not seeing enough sunlight and therefore our vitamin D levels are low. And I think it was in 2019 in the British Medical Journal, they supplemented vitamin D and they could see a clear and statistically significant reduction in coughs and colds for people that were taking vitamin D. So it's not just bones that we're helping with vitamin D. It also seems to be our immune system that we're helping with vitamin D. So I think if, if anyone wanted to, again, dip their toe in, omega-3 and vitamin D would be a good place to start. Hmm. Um, and then after that, we've talked a lot about trying to, you know, look after yourself with muscle performance and, and muscle bulk. One of the most underrated supplements, in my opinion, is creatine. So mm. creatine, there's a truckload of human data. We've been using it for a long period of time. It is a safe supplement and it, it does improve muscle performance. Um, and so in, in terms of your workout, and it also helps with muscle recovery. So initially there were concerns around, you know, kidney performance and, and would taking creatine adversely affect your kidney function but there's no long-term data suggesting that um, which is great so that would be probably the third supplement that that i would start is creatine <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah creatine also has like other besides the muscle performance side it also has like cognitive effects and uh, helps with bone density methylation and uh, improves intelligence and iq so <laughs> and i think yeah it's a very uh, underrated for sure supplement and uh, just yeah. needed for overall energy uh, production so you need energy yeah. for everything and it's kind of good mm -hmm. uh, but what about uh, one question about the omega-3s um uh, I, obviously like i would imagine that the quality of the omega-3s also matters because you know there's a lot of a lot of omega-3s on the market tend to be like oxidized and uh, rancid uh, so i think you know, the, the, because you know, once the fat, uh, the PUFAs in the uh, fat or the fish uh, get oxidized, then they actually become quite damaging to the body and harmful, causing a lot of like this uh, lipid peroxidation and oxidative stress. So, uh, you know, what are, what are real, maybe like sources of uh, omega-3s that you uh, use or find? Yeah, you've touched on something vital is that, you know, the supplement industry is not regulated like what medications are. So it, it's very important to try and do everything that we can to make sure that there's no added things within the supplements that we're taking and making sure that the supplements are actually what we want. So there's a, there's a great resource called labdoor.com. And what they do is third-party test a lot of supplements that we take. And on Labdoor, um, you know, there, there's a lot of different brands that are tested for omega-3 and creatine and, and virtually whatever other supplement that you want to take. So I, before taking any supplement, I always check them against Labdoor to see you know, which one is the so-called best, which one's the purest um, and, and, and go from there. So for, for me, that's, that's the, the best way of making sure that the supplements that we are taking are safe. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good uh, resource to know. Um, but what about some of the, yeah, like more, I'd say more um, intriguing or uh, more like, you know, popular longevity supplements, uh, that are recently that you find or uh, what, are, what, are, what are like uh, your most favorite ones uh, in terms of uh, that actually may have like an um, additional longevity effect? Yeah, so there, there's a lot of different supplements out there and it's quite tricky to navigate which ones are hype and which ones may actually pan out. So for me, what I, what I try and focus in on is what the interventions testing program are coming up with. So the interventions testing program is a group in the United States and 
what's special about them is that they run out of three separate labs and so th they'll take a bunch of supplements and they'll they'll test them in these three separate labs uh, with mice that are what we call genetically heterogeneous so, so that just means that they're not just one gene pool that there are a variety of genes um, so it tries to match the real world and they'll placebo control um, these supplements and they'll see which ones will actually extend lifespan um, and th there's been there's there's only been a few molecules that seem to extend lifespan. Um, but what's great about this program is that it also, that they publish all of their results. So a lot of molecules that they've tested um, don't have positive results. So they'll publish those and we can say, you know, that one was hype. Let's move on to the ones that actually seem to be extending lifespan. So I suppose that the shining example of that is a molecule called rapamycin. So rapamycin, I think it was discovered in the 1960s. And currently within medicine, it's used as an immunosuppressant to stop organ rejection. So if people need a kidney transplant, they will take rapamycin to stop their body rejecting that organ. So it sounds like quite a radical idea that that's a molecule that can um, extend lifespan. But how that molecule works is that it acts on mTOR, which we've already talked about. So it seems that as we age, mTOR is switched on more and more. It's almost like the body is trying to compensate for our muscle decline. It wants to try and rebuild that muscle. The trouble with doing that is again, you're never activating autophagy. So that's where rapamycin comes in. If you, it seems that if, if we're using rapamycin intermittently to switch on mTOR, but then, uh, sorry, to switch off mTOR, um, but then also have periods where we're switching on mTOR, that seems to be providing a lifespan benefit. Now that's mm -hmm. borne out in mice. It will be very interesting to see if that's borne out in humans. So, you know, th that's personally why I'm, why I've set up a clinical trial to look at rapamycin in humans. So, so that's one example. Um, there's a couple of other examples that um, of molecules that we can actually grab onto. One of them is glycine, which is a non, so-called non-essential amino acid. Glycine is one of the fundamental building blocks of an antioxidant in the body called glutathione. So glutathione levels, in the blood at least, decline with age, particularly around the age of 45 to 50. So it seems that you know, when, when mice in the interventions testing program, when they had quite large dosages of glycine, there was a lifespan extension benefit. So again, it would be interesting to see if that bears out in humans. Mm. There, is, there is some potential evidence that it will though. So <clears throat> there was a trial of COVID patients um, and half of them were given placebo. The other half were given a combination of supplements called combined metabolic activators. And one of them, well, some of those supplements um, were to do with rebuilding glutathione. And when those, when the combined metabolic activator, um, well, the combined metabolic activator group actually recovered from COVID a whopping three days faster compared to placebo. So, you know, there, there is some human data coming through around, you know, glycine and glutathione coming through. Mm, um, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do. I'm a huge fan of glycine as well. And uh, yeah, yeah so one of my favorite uh, like longevity supplements uh, that I take on a daily basis. And uh, yeah, besides uh, the, the things that you mentioned, uh, glutathione, it also has uh, this balancing effect on uh, methionine, which uh, in excess has been linked to aging and uh, cancer even. So the glycine like just counteracts methionine and the glycine supplementation has been found to be uh, associated with uh, basically um, having the same effect as methionine restriction on longevity without necessarily restricting methionine. So I think everyone who eat, eats like a, any kind of protein in uh, larger amounts, they will definitely need to take uh, the glycine to uh, counteract uh, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and th th there's also been a few other examples of, of methods that we were hopeful would extend lifespan, but haven't. So one of them is, um, one of them is resveratrol. So resveratrol was tested by the interventions testing program at quite large dosages, and it didn't extend lifespan. Another one is um, aspirin. So in the initial trials with the interventions testing program at quite a low dose, aspirin was associated with a slightly longer lifespan, but at higher dosages of aspirin, there was no effect. Um, it's actually the same with omega-3. So mm. omega-3 was trialed and it didn't extend lifespan. I personally still take omega-3 because I want to try and reduce my heart attack risk. Um, mm. There's also some evidence around cognition as well. Um, so 
yeah the, and then the, there's a few other supplements that that i personally take that haven't that, that have been tested by the intervention testing program so one of them is nicotinamide riboside so <clears throat> we've touched a lot about um metabolism uh you know with this podcast and how it seems to decline from about the age of 60 one of the central molecules to metabolism is nad which we can see declines as we age and by taking precursors such as nicotinamide riboside we can probably rebuild our nad and make our metabolism more resilient against disease so again if that, that's part of the combined metabolic activator group of supplements that was treating COVID patients with that three-day faster recovery. So mm -hmm. nicotinamide riboside, when it was tested again by the interventions testing program, it didn't extend lifespan, but I'm, I'm more excited about what it will do for diseased states. Again, if, if we catch COVID or there's fatty liver or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, nicotinamide riboside probably would help. Um, mm. Again, we're still waiting on more human data to come mm. through. 